are you searching for the best in online black radio? Then go to blacktalkradionetwork.com, helping you filter through the noise. Real talk, black talk. This is probably one of our oldest guns in the shop. This is what EWG Guns in Loomis is known for. This is a Manton rifle. Historical firearms. The walls and shelves lined with guns that are over 100 years old. But now, in the age of the coronavirus, buyers are targeting newer weapons. Instead of the collector, now we're looking for the people who are just genuinely concerned about defense. Owner Ed Gilbert says business is booming. Last month was his busiest in over three years. In April alone, he sold the equivalent of six months' worth of guns, most of those people buying for the first time. I would say, honestly, that probably 95% of our sales in the last month have been to new gun owners. Fear during the pandemic, triggering people to buy. It's like a the night before an exam, everybody's cramming into the gun stores, trying to figure out what they need, how to buy it. What's telling is the most popular gun he's sold, Glock handguns, so much so that he's run out. We've got uh, one Springfield XD, we have one Beretta PX4. And it isn't just Placer County that's seen record gun sales. The FBI ran 3.7 million background checks in March. That's the most ever since the system launched, and a million more than the same time last year. Those background checks translate to nearly 2.6 million guns sold in March. That's according to the consulting firm Small Arms Analytics and Forecasting. We need three things as human beings. We need sustenance, shelter, and security. If you don't have security, you don't get to keep the first two. But Gilbert also says owning a gun isn't for everyone. He's pointed some people to pepper spray, tasers, or stun guns instead. We have denied purchases. We do have a huge responsibility here. It's not just to sell guns. It's to arm and educate. A novel virus sparking people to new methods of protection. In Loomis, Marley Martinez, KCRA 3 News. We've sorted out those technical difficulties, and now we have Emily Jones of Georgia Public Broadcasting back on the line to talk about community reaction to that shooting back in February. Hi, Emily. Hi, Ari. First, just tell us what happened when, when that shooting took place. So Ahmaud Arbery was running down a residential street near Brunswick, Georgia, and two men who were a father and son, Gregory and Travis McMichael, confronted him. They were in a pickup truck, and they claimed there had been some recent robberies and that Arbery had shown up on security footage in the neighborhood. So the McMichaels saw him running. They got their guns and confronted him while he was exercising. Uh, Travis McMichael and Arbery fought, and then Travis's shotgun went off. Uh, the McMichaels say they were making a citizen's arrest, but friends and family say that doesn't really make sense, that uh, Arbery was just jogging. And we should point out that it's somewhat similar to the Trayvon Martin killing in Florida back in 2012. Uh, in that case, a 17-year-old African-American was shot and killed by a neighborhood watch volunteer, George Zimmerman. And Zimmerman said Martin was acting suspiciously and they got into a confrontation. Zimmerman killed Martin and he claimed self-defense, similar to this case. This all happened back in February. What's the status of the investigation today? Well, the district attorney has now asked state law enforcement authorities to investigate, and he also says he'll take the case before a grand jury. This DA, though, is actually the third one involved in the case. Uh, The first one almost immediately cited a conflict of interest because Gregory McMichael, the father, was an investigator for more than 20 years in that Brunswick DA office. And then the next DA who was assigned also removed himself at the family's request because his son worked in the same Brunswick DA's office. So even though the shooting happened back in February, there still haven't been any arrests, charges, and there's really mounting frustration and anger in the community about it. And what's the family saying? So the family uh, yeah, go spoke today, sorry, the family spoke today uh, along with their lawyers and the lawyers are basically saying that um, because Gregory McMichael worked in law enforcement in the county for so long, basically the whole system is compromised and the feds should step in. How is the coronavirus pandemic affecting the investigation? 
The biggest impact is on the grand jury. We're under a judicial state of emergency here in Georgia, so a jury can't be impaneled at least until June, um, and we don't know when that'll happen. And I think we probably would have probably seen protests earlier as well if people weren't afraid to gather in big groups. That's Emily Jones, Savannah Bureau Chief of Georgia Public Broadcasting. Thank you for your reporting. You're welcome. Context of white supremacy. Gusty Renegade in for another broadcast, hopefully to share constructive information on the system of white supremacy. Today's date, Thursday, excuse me, Wednesday. Day ahead. Wednesday, May 6, 2020. So I have been told. We will be here tomorrow. That is Thursday. Uh, Dr. Layla O. Africa. Uh, the Nutritional Destruction of Black People, uh, also titled Nutricide, uh, our fifth installment, uh, same program time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific uh, tomorrow. That would be Thursday. Uh, tune in. We're still relatively early. I guess we've read like a quarter of the book uh, so far. We'll keep rolling. It is still in the running for worst book ever. But we will, you know, see what the next installment holds. Uh, We should be here Friday for neutralizing workplace racism. Uh, Again, massive adjustments with the pandemic and safety precautions. That has been a big deal. Uh, Hazard pay. Lots that they had a massive uh, report just talking about hazard pay for essential workers and all of that. We'll probably review some of that for this uh, coming Thursday as well. We should be here uh, this coming Saturday for the compensatory call in normal broadcast time, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And then this time, uh, not this time next week, this time next Tuesday. A week from yesterday, next Tuesday, uh, we should have uh, a returning guest, Toyin Agbetu, uh, black male. Uh, He's in London. He was on the program back in 2011. Uh, talking about white supremacy, racism as a global system. Uh, He's been writing, talking about racism and the current health pandemic, talking about some of the same issues that I just mentioned that we've been talking about Uh, in the UK. Essential workers seems like they got a substantial number of dark people uh, who are being piled up as so-called essential workers and whether or not they get hazard pay and protective gear seems like some of the exact same issues uh non-white people being disproportionately impacted he was talking about that as well uh again thought it would be informative uh to hear from different non-white people in different parts of the world uh about this just so that we can get more information make better choices have a better grasp of what's happening uh he should be here uh next Tuesday uh it'll be 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, right? So uh, London, eight-hour time difference uh, from Seattle to London. Uh, so to try to make it reasonable, because if we did it at normal broadcast time, it would be like, I don't know, 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that, uh, for uh, Toyin to get back on the broadcast with us. So uh, it'll be a little bit earlier. Uh, I tried to see if I could scooch it down a little bit uh, so that folks, if you are working or, you know, otherwise occupied in the daytime, it'll be a little bit later. Uh, But at least you have advance notice uh, that it'll be happening next Tuesday, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. We'll check in, hear what's going down uh, in the U.K. Let's see. Other news items to get to so I talked about the retreats uh, over the past weekend on the compensatory call in Uh, I already mentioned obviously we had to cancel the Toronto uh, retreat border is still closed and looks like it's going to be closed for a while they said it'll be closed I believe at least until the end of the month Uh, and then they said that it uh, most assuredly will not reopen that they're just going to extend the closure for another 
unspecified amount of time. So Toronto became unfeasible quickly. Uh, Washington, D.C., however, we were talking about that the whole time, August 5th through the 9th. All of this obviously contingent on, you know, the coronavirus cooperating and things not being shut down, travel being allowed, it being safe uh, to go. But uh, we had uh, listeners who were already registered, signed up to go and or people who uh, wanted to go anyway, wanted to go to Toronto. That got canceled. So uh, and at the end, really, the conclusion of all this uh, major motivating factor beyond people saying that they you know, wanted to participate, but changing our diet, getting some exercise that's been talked about quite a bit during this whole uh, health uh, health crisis uh, and really putting uh, a value, a priority on our health. Uh, that is at the core of these retreats. Uh, and I know I've posted a lot of my vegan treats, what I've been cooking uh, since March, the crisis started uh, and plant based meals, lots of different things. I think I had uh, pot chickpea pot pie so not chicken pot pie chickpea pot pie uh this week eggplant parmesan and pizza with all veggies lasagna different ways lasagna uh made in the oven the regular way and then stovetop lasagna lots of different things uh that i've been uh making over the past month or so plant-based options where you can eat and have really enjoyable food right like uh i hadn't had uh, pot pie in years, you know, and would not have been excited about it. Would have been thinking, Ugh, like, you know, frozen TV dinner type thing. I didn't even know people made pot pie from scratch, but um, you can have it. Doesn't have to have chicken. You can make it really tasty. Can have veggies. It doesn't have to just be carrots and peas. I had pot pie with uh, broccoli, zucchini mushrooms I did put carrots in it actually now that I'm thinking about it I just I didn't put uh the peas in it but I mean you can really make it tasty and flavorful delicious from scratch crust was flaky I put pictures up on social media like was really amazing but that's at the core of the retreats that's why doing it and you know being about health so we will see how things look in August uh August 5th through the 9th. Those are the dates not changing. Information is on the blog. Uh, just updating the deadline because I was uh, a little flummoxed uh, with the whole crisis and all that. But going to see if we can persevere and make Washington, D.C. happen. Counter racist retreat August 5th through the 9th. So if we have enough folks who are down to participate, we will do it up in the nation's capital this summer. Uh, we'll be right in. Hey, maybe by then things have calmed down it's safe we can come out folks will be ready to get out and uh have some tasty eats do some yoga get some exercise in and see what the heck is going down in washington dc this summer drop an email if you need more information looking forward to uh getting out uh if white people permit uh if not we will cancel same way we did with the retreat in toronto uh, let's see. Uh, other than that, uh, remind folks, because we've had uh, so many folks who've been uh, generous throughout and invested, nabbed items from our wish list, uh, invest if you think the cows is constructive. And that is certainly important during this crisis situation, I would say global crisis situation globally. We should not be ra wasting time, energy, resources during this period shouldn't even be listening to the cows much less investing supporting sharing that's another way you can invest share the broadcast put it on twitter instagram facebook help other non if you think it would benefit other non-white people in a time of crisis to hear the context of white supremacy counter racist content but sharing, you can certainly invest that way. You can hit the blog, racism-notes.blogspot.com. Racism-notes.blogspot.com. You'll see information for the Washington, D.C. retreat. And then also, if you look in the top right corner, PayPal button, uh, also on Cash App, 
uh, Cash App the address Cash App dot or excuse me Cash App dot com forward slash the cows. Much obliged to all the folks who have supported. Uh, if you are not into all of the new high fangled high tech gadgetry, uh, you can drop an email. We can supply a physical mailing address. Whew, man, hopefully I'll be able to check the mail without being ambushed and killed. Uh, but we can supply a physical mailing address uh, if you prefer to support that way. Again, huge thanks to all the folks who have invested and kept the cows rolling for is it 11 and a half years at this point. Uh, you can also support via our wish list at Amazon.com. Have got a number of items even during the Corona virus lockdown. Got my cast iron pots. New water pitcher has been great. Much obliged again. Hope the cows has been continues to be worthy of your time and energy, especially so given the emergency that we are facing. That said, uh, before I get to my situation, just the power of white supremacy racism. I know many folks uh, or I know it seems that a lot of cows listeners are essential workers. So they have not been at home with their feet propped up. Uh, just watching things on Netflix and baking and, you know, telecommuting, as they call it. That has not been many non-white people all over the world, apparently. For a number of whites and some victims, too, apparently, that has been their reality for about the last, I don't know, month and a half going on two months. Just chilling at the house and complaining that they can't go outside, being mad, maybe protesting or wanting to go join the protesters uh, so we can get back outside. Amongst the things that, that folks have been doing is watching a lot of Netflix TV, the documentary series on uh, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls from the 1990s, uh, The Last Dance, a uh, 10 part series. I guess they're about halfway through. I told folks or I shared on social media that I found accidentally a link that had the first eight episodes at the time that I shared it. They had only aired the first four episodes. So you could get way ahead at this point. They still only aired the first six episodes uh, so the link you can, can get ahead you can see the episodes that they're going to air this weekend if you so choose uh, this past weekend the episode they talked about some of Michael Jordan's uh, gambling habits uh, it's widely known he's confessed to being a big time gambler and he's a billionaire has had lots whites have allowed him to have uh, lots and lots of nickels uh, for many, many decades now. So he's someone who apparently uh, many rumors and his own testimony, you know, will wager and gamble quite a bit, you know, hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. No big deal to go in and gamble that amount of money because he's, you know, billionaire at this point. So they cover that in the documentary where he faced all these really big allegations in the midst, like in the prime of his career, faced all of these allegations. You know, are you a gambler? You've been gambling on games and all that. Like there was even suspicion that he was that he didn't retire in 1993, that he was, in fact, suspended, that this was punishment for his gambling behavior. He had done something wayward. Uh, and so they flesh this out they spend a good bit of time about all this in the documentary and they revealed that uh, Michael Jordan signed a check uh, to cover a $57,000 loan to a black male black male named Slim Bowler and they show this black male uh, in the film and uh, he's they in fact they show him when he's going to trial they have, you know, when they, they do the sketch artists and they show him walking to the courtroom and everything, they show him going to the trial and Michael Jordan ends up having to come and testify. Uh, Mr. Slim Bowler, he is on trial. Uh, suspicion of uh, selling peddling drugs uh, and some other, I think, like money laundering and some other lesser crimes. But the big one is, you know, suspicion of selling drugs. And so Michael Jordan is subpoenaed to testify at this trial in 1993 and in fact they even give more details about this uh, slim bowler figure uh, that apparently uh, Michael Jordan as opposed to going to the White House 
to visit uh, George H.W. Bush, the late, uh, with the Chicago Bulls team, which you normally do, right? If you win the championship, they had all that fury about current teams not wanting to go because President Trump's there. Remember that with Steph Curry and the Warriors. Uh, so Donald Trump, I mean, excuse me, Michael Jordan said, I'm not going to go. Not because he's protesting George H.W. or anything like that. Uh, he doesn't want to go. He says it's to spend time with his family, but it's really to go so he can gamble with Slim Bowler. So at the trial, Michael Jordan's there and they got a sketch artist of him being on trial on the witness stand. And he says that he wrote this $57,000 check to cover ga- cover a gambling debt to Slim Bowler. It was embarrassing and blah, blah, blah. So they include all that there. I contrast, Dr. Welsing talks about this contrast. Now, they spent all this time. And this was big. This was major. Folks who were alive, if you paid attention to Michael Jordan basketball at all, this was enormous. Like, they were talking about this in the middle of the uh, finals. Like, this is huge. <laughs> like, accusing, the, uh, I don't even know what it would be to compare. If you could imagine, like, uh, it would have to be like LeBron James or uh, Stephen Curry, like, the best basketball player in the world. Uh, and they're at the championship, at the finals, and being accused of gambling. On Are you betting on games? And all of it, like, that's the first thing that they want to talk about. That would be the, the way that you would have to imagine it, like how big a, you know, scandal this was at the time. Uh, but they include all of that in the documentary, and you can see Slim Bowler and all that is courtroom sketches, this black male who's suspected drug peddler. They do not in this 10 part documentary, 10 hours. It's longer than the O.J. Simpson documentary that ESPN released. This is also an ESPN product. They do not have Craig Hodges. Who is Craig Hodges, you might say? Craig Hodges was an NBA champion, two time NBA championship teammate of Michael Jordan. He played on the very Chicago Bulls teams. Now, they don't have uh, every teammate. They don't have every single person who played on the teams uh, with Michael Jordan, I don't think. But they have a lot of them in this documentary. Uh, Even some people who didn't play with Michael Jordan are in it. But he played with him for years, was drafted. uh, Or I take it back, I don't know if he was drafted by the Bulls, but he played with them for quite some time, like a number of years. Like I said, he won multiple championships and uh, won multiple uh, three-point championships at the uh, three-point contest for NBA All-Star Weekend. Craig Hodges, nowhere to be found in the documentary. Craig Hodges on the championship team. You're supposed to go to the White House. Craig Hodges doesn't go to the White House either. Is he out gambling with Slim Bowler? No. Protesting racism, white supremacy. And in fact, Craig Hodges said he was on the 91 championship team. They faced uh, Magic Johnson in the finals. Bulls beat them. He said that he approached Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson. 1991, if your memory's good, or if you are a student of history, if you were alive, Rodney King beating was that year. The trial was the next summer, 1990, or next spring, 1992. But Rodney King beating was in March of 1991. The playoffs for the NBA start in April. The finals are in June, early June. Craig Hodges says that he goes to Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and says, hey, we should boycott the NBA finals, the Rodney King situation, and to call attention. We should boycott the finals. And he says, you know, they're not feeling I'm like, eh, that's extremist. You know, you're sounding kind of you sounding kind of militant. I don't know. I don't want to do all that. And he says, fine. And he goes he goes into more detail. He's done a number of uh, of interviews. But Craig Hodges is known for talking about white supremacy, racism for quite some time. Uh, and Craig Hodges, uh, they talk about Colin Kaepernick, Craig Hodges being blackballed uh, from the league that he could still play. And it was because he was outspoken and talking about racism, white supremacy and articulating, Hey, you know, forget Slim Bowl. I'm not about gambling. I'm about replacing white supremacy with justice and talking about real politics. In fact, he even said that his understanding and study of sports history, Jerry West, the freaking logo drafted Kobe Bryant, Jerry freaking West suspected race soldier 
that Jerry West and Elgin Baylor, victim of racism, Jerry West is a black male, who was a victim of Donald Sterling. He's in the dos- in the lawsuit, if you check. Uh, Elgin Baylor, who said he was victimized, and Donald Sterling messed him over. Go back, you can just go read. There are many reports. Elgin Baylor talking about Donald Sterling as a racist. Anyway, uh, but Craig Hodges, he says that his memory is from one of the All-Star games from the late 1960s, I believe, 69, where Jerry West and Elgin Baylor, they were going to protest. Uh, over racism, white supremacy, and how the players were being treated and which hotel they were going to stay at, that they were going to protest the All-Star game to make sure that they had the league's attention, that racism is not acceptable. He said, that's my understanding in the history of the game. Jerry West, the freaking logo, protesting racism, white supremacy. Mr. Craig Hodges. I'm going to see if we can get him as a guest on the program. But yeah, he had a lot to say about racism, but he is not Unless I've been misinformed, half of it hasn't been released, so maybe they got to say they saved him for the grand finale, and he's going to burst out and talk about his experience. But no interviews from Craig Hodges. Quite a bit of time on Slim Bo- uh, Slim Bowler. We are comfortable presenting, projecting black people as criminals. Not comfortable presenting, talking about black people as victims of racism, white supremacy, who are attempting to solve that problem. Anywho, just wanted to make sure that I pointed that out. Uh, All righty. So this broadcast, the whole reason for it, uh, titled uh, Checking Mail, Checking the Mailbox While Black. Accurate title, Checking the Mailbox Under White Supremacy. That is the accurate title. It's, It's cliche and it's short. They have all of these little... Uh, hashtags and catchphrases jogging while black uh, Mr. Ahmad uh, Arbery uh, and lots of shopping while black jogging while black they got lots of these driving while black on and on and on and on and on swimming while black Uh, it's all of that is jogging under white supremacy racism the focus is on white people practicing racism white supremacy it's shopping under white supremacy racism checking the mailbox under white supremacy racism it's jogging under white supremacy racism there is no problem at all with me having melanin the problem is not with me being classified as black the problem the sickness as mr andrew young said is white supremacy racism white people make sure that that is accurate correct and explicitly stated the correct title is checking the mailbox under white supremacy now uh, getting to the details and you know why all of this is important I hope people's memory is good enough they can recall the audio segments from the beginning the surging gun sales. There have been many of those reports. We played a whole bunch of them uh, here at the context of white supremacy over the last month and a half uh, since the uh, so-called health crisis began and white people saying, oh, I got to have got toilet paper and guns. I don't know what that connection is, but toilet paper and guns surging. Can't have enough of them. Not that they didn't have guns already, right? It's not like all of the guns that they bought when that no count Negro Obama was president. It's not like they all rusted and broke and are malfunctioning right like they were buying guns right up until Trump got to the White House in 2017 so it's not like you know they haven't cleaned and oiled their firearms uh, over the last two years three years I don't think that's the case I could be in error they brag about cleaning them we went to the uh, gun range in Florida they brag about keeping the weapons clean Anyway, but there have been lots of those reports, new gun owners, lots of even some of them where they said they're a little nervous about some of these folks. First time gun owners like, wow, could be dangerous, could be some domestic violence, all kinds of things. You even heard that in the audio. They said they have discouraged some folks. I don't know. You should get pepper spray. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you don't need a firearm. Then they come back with the second report uh, talking about Ahmaud Arbery. Black male out jogging and ends up dead at the hands of race soldiers no badge citizens arrest they call it 
little current context for why this is significant because I uh, had said I was going to write about it but I said you know there should probably be a program I was going to talk about it on the compensatory call-in but said this is probably worthy of you know enough time because things are dangerous Uh, I mean when Andrew Young says the sickness is white supremacy really think on that take that seriously Uh, man I go out this is on Sunday I go out to check the mailbox I've been to the grocery store I have uh, packages groceries in my hand and not that I'm looking for any brownie points or anything but I mean I really look like a Seattle like grocery shopper I have my reusable shopping bag and everything right like I don't I don't just look like I'm out uh, you know plastic bag and all the rest I got my shopping bag and all of that uh, important tidbit uh, at my or no, I definitely will not say my the current residence where I'm allowed to stay the mailbox is not like directly on the house right so the house is fenced and then the mailbox is outside the fence right makes it easy for the mail carrier they can just drive and boop, drop it right in the box some people don't like having people come all the way onto the property and molest the house uh, that way I guess it's preference I've had both at different locations where I've resided over the years but that's the setup at this particular residence mailbox is outside of the fenced gate and it is uh, it does have a key it's key lock so I'm outside the gate right at the road um, with the key not a crowbar not a screwdriver not a chisel Uh, I have a key and I have been at this residence uh, for the past year it's been a year since the flood I have or since I was able to move back so I've been here for one year right it's not like I've you know just been here for a couple weeks or a month I've been here I've been checking the mail with a key not a crowbar or a chisel uh, for a year so I'm bent over I uh, am getting parcels out of the mailbox Uh, I set my grocery bag on top of the mailbox and set the mail in it was quite a bit of mail I hadn't checked the mail in a while and I was kind of surprised because quite a bit had arrived so I'm taking things out and putting them in my grocery bag all of a sudden and it's light outside to make sure I give context it's like uh, like early evening we'll say seven o'clock we'll say uh, and out here it's still really bright now it's May so sun is still out you know early evening so uh, I'm getting parcels out of the out of the mailbox vehicle rolls up black vehicle black Jeep SUV and a white guy hops out of the vehicle he's wearing black clothing and he's got his phone in hand He hops out. He doesn't, you know, give a name, who he is, where do you live? Like, there is no friendliness at all. None of that, you know, hey, your neighbor, how you doing? Isn't the Rona crazy? You got a math? None of that. It's phone out. Hey, fella, what are you doing? Do you live around here? Where are you going? Is that your mailbox? (laughs) I'm just like, whoa. I'm thinking I've got my groceries. I'm thinking about what you know meal I'm gonna cook. I got eggplant. Like do it up eggplant parmesan. Like I've only had that one time in the last ten years. Like poop, poop, poop. and then whoa. And so he, you know, like I said, he's got his phone out and he's, you know, boom, boom, boom. Where do you live? What are you doing? Who are you? You around here? You from around here? And so I'm just like whoa. Uh, I look at him. I look at the car. Now, like I said, this is a black SUV. They do have, um, in the Seattle area, they do have uh, unmarked black SUVs. Uh, enforcement officials have unmarked black SUVs. So it is possible uh, this could be an enforcement officer. But, you know, there are no lights, no siren. He's not dressed uh, in uniform of an enforcement officer or anything he's got on like black shorts a black t-shirt I think he had a hat on uh, but nothing that would identify as a, him as an enforcement officer right just looks like a normal uh, civilian great soldier but civilian so I look at him 
And I take a few seconds. I make my assessment. I don't say anything. I say I'm going to ignore. So I turn back and I continue, you know, getting parked packages out of the mailbox. Uh, and so he's still standing there. He's got his phone. And I'd say distance wise, he's probably about. Mm, we're not social or he is not social distancing. I'd say he's probably. Maybe four feet maybe four feet or so maybe four feet uh so after i ignore him after he's you know got his first barrage of questions he says uh we've had some break-ins in the neighborhood and uh trying to make sure that everything's safe everything is okay like i said do you live here where are you from and so i look at him again and i pause and i say so call the police now, I don't say this is the best way uh, to deal with the situation. Uh, certainly, there are countless, indefinite number of examples of where the enforcement officials arriving does not improve a situation for black people, non-white people. I don't say that in this situation, if the enforcement officials had arrived, it would have been any better it could have been way worse i could have been tased shot arrested uh anything they could have been his brothers sisters anything so i certainly don't say that you know that would have uh made anything better but my thought process was following logic if you think there is a crime happening you should call the police I'm a criminal. I'm out looting mailboxes. You know, I've got a crow. Again, I had a, a key, not a crowbar, but I'm out Jimmy and mailboxes open or whatever it is. Call the police. Following logic. Like, I'm not going to have a discussion with you. I'm not answering any of your questions. We're not doing random interrogation from a race soldier. That's your conclusion that I'm some outlaw out here on a Sunday afternoon stealing packages call the police so this is where things change drastically as I said he was very hostile uh, there was no hey I'm Bob welcome to the neighborhood I bought you some fried chicken do you need a mask none of that you know like I live over here and isn't this crazy and are you enjoying that none of that it was all what are you doing where are you going how'd you get that box open all of that dropped once I said, call the police. Then it was, oh, uh, well, no. See, I'm just trying to keep everything safe. You see, I didn't, I didn't mean anything. Just, uh, you know, we, we, we've been having a lot of break-ins in the neighborhood. You see, that, that's all, you see. So at this point, after I said, call the police, I continue checking them. It didn't say anything else. I'm checking the mailbox. I bend over. Make sure I got everything. I close the mailbox, lock it back with the key, grab my groceries, packages. This is, oh man, I'm just, I'm just looking out for your safety. Looking out for my safety. I'm just, I'm looking out for you, man. You know, we, we, we've had a whole lot of break-ins in the neighborhood. Don't you know that? We've had a whole lot of crime, man. It's crazy. I'm looking out for you. I said, are you an enforcement officer? Where do you live? what's your name do you have any identification now I'm in the question lane he doesn't answer any of my questions not oh I'm in the neighborhood safety you know association we have meetings every Thursday you should come by once the run is all over we bring in coffee and cakes and talk about safety and any random negro hooligans trying to rape and steal from the mailboxes come on none of that Again, no, I'm Todd. I'm so sorry about this. My name's, you know, Thad Richards, and I've been living in this area for, you know, 10 years. Seattle is my favorite plantation. To None of that. He puts his phone away. He backs up. I didn't I didn't mean anything, man. I didn't I didn't mean anything. I was I was just looking out for your safety, man. I didn't mean it that way. And he gets in his SUV at that point. I remember. Oh, wait a minute. You're not a Neanderthal. You have a phone. 
I whip out my phone. Bam! Start taking pictures. Get his SUV. Move around so that I can get his license. I certainly do not say that that is the best strategy because uh, I think I've said on this program before a number of times. In fact, not just once. There are a lot of different illustrations of where something like this, where it's random, where you're just out jogging, walking, selling water, drinking water, anything just existing in the system of white supremacy and some race soldier uh, comes up. What are you doing? Where are you going? And, And all of that whipping out that phone. It can escalate the situation. I have seen that sometimes I'm specifically thinking that situation in Chicago. It was a race soldier, white woman. Uh, was she, it was, I think it was a whole family. It wasn't even just one black person, but, uh, she was coming up. She was having one. I think it started with her interaction with a black male. She called him a nigger and cursed at him. All of this other, uh, violent verbal assault. And then she spit on him. And I think that was after he had his phone out. Like he pulled his phone out when it started and she's like, you know, I don't care. Videotape me. I don't care about that nigger. Who do you think you are? And then boom, she spits on him and all the rest of it. He got all that on camera. Now, uh, the police did eventually, uh, get involved. They arrested her, and I believe she even got prosecuted with that case. I remember us following it. That was like 2015 or so, if my memory is correct. But um, there are a number of instances where pulling out the phone did not de escalate uh, the race soldier in question. I uh, just got further enraged. Like, how dare you, you know, record me? Who do you think you are? We got an uppity nigger here with some technology is going to try and record me and all the rest of it. So, that might not necessarily be the best uh, strategy, but I did want to try to take pictures because I had never seen this guy. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know if he was an enforcement officer. Are you just a random racist. Do you live around here? Are you just driving through? Like, you know, I didn't know anything. So I thought that was a good idea to get uh, pictures, even though I did feel like there was a slight uh, risk. Anyway, so I started taking pictures and he said, excuse me, sir. I'm going to I'm going to back out now. I'm going to leave. Sorry. Sorry. He takes, uh, he backs out, leaves, never see him again. No, I know, again, I've been around white people. I've seen when they make an error or they do something wrong, like no Starbucks gift card in the mailbox. I'm so sorry, friend. We got off on the wrong foot. He could have even put a KFC gift card in the mailbox. I'm so sorry, friend. Have a few drumsticks on me. We got off. We got off on the wrong foot. Let's let's do better. Come. We got the neighborhood meeting. Come by. We'll have a fresh batch of fried chicken for you. Let's be friends, brother. None of that. Now. I say all this in terms of importance beyond, you know, oh, man, Gus had a little tacky Sunday. He ruined, you know, me being able to come in and do my eggplant Parmesan, which did not happen. I still came in and had great eggplant. But I say all this over the past since this, you know, whole uh, crisis started. I have been saying. uh, At the end, I normally, you know, sobriety would be best. Uh, If you're going to be driving passenger driver, buckle up. I've been saying like pause. It should be real strategic going outside. Now, I just went to check the mailbox. Technically, I didn't go anywhere. And all this happened. I've been saying that because my conclusion, this not that I needed the mailbox incident to solidify, but my conclusion before that was, wow, what am I seeing? What have I been seeing every day for the past two months almost? I've been seeing reports, just what we started with, white people buying lots of guns, which is nothing new, but another search of white people getting lots of guns and saying that they're afraid. I don't know if somebody is coming to steal my toilet paper, rape my daughter. I don't know. Might have to shoot the Rona, whatever the excuse is. But I got to get more guns and more ammunition. They said that too. record sales of ammunition. White people out with their guns protesting. They're mad. Protesting in Michigan, protesting in California, you're not going to close the beaches. Protesting in South Carolina, you're not going to close the gun shops. You're not going to close my business. You're not going to tell me to stay in the house. I'm mad. You know, I can't pay my bills, can't support my family. Now, some of this, I think, is just a lie because some of this has just been them saying, I don't think you have a right to tell I'm a white man. I'm a white woman. I don't care about the road. You don't have a right to tell me what to do you don't have a right to tell me I have to stay in my house you don't have a right to tell me I have to close my business I think a lot of it has been that not I'm struggling 
and I can't afford a can of corn and I'm going to be poor and broke forever uh, if you don't open things back up right now. I'm sure that's some white people, but I suspect a whole lot. Same thing I said with the toilet paper. They're out hoarding toilet paper. It's not that they don't have toilet paper. It's not that they don't have guns. I already have all this stuff piled up. We're in a system of white supremacy. They just, I want to do what I want to do. You're not the boss of me. I can go out and do what I want. This is my plantation. With that environment where you have a significant number of white people who are angry, anxious, they're upset. You do have some white people who are, you know, my business, I'm concerned, or my job, I'm concerned, finances. Absolutely. You do have some, and the more this goes on, I'm sure you'll have a growing number of white people who are in that group. At the underlying theme of all of that, what Andrew Young said, the sickness is white supremacy. This is a culture worldwide where they joke about violence against black people. Isn't that a lot of the racist jokes that we analyze on this program? Mentioned President Obama. They had a ton when he was president. Most of them were about violence, enjoying and having fun practicing violence against black people. It was one of the ones. Uh, what do President Obama and an apple have in common? Both look good hanging from a tree. Heard that one. They had a bunch of them. But violence against black people, that being funny and encouraged in a system of racism so now you get an environment now for two months you've had white people where they're riled up they're upset they're cooped in the house they've been having all those reports about uh, domestic violence alcoholism lots of those reports uh, about this because people are stressed and uh, the anxiety of being isolated and you don't get to be around people and having your normal routine disrupted Dr. Rasayan I talked to him this week about that he was saying the same thing like uh, just the anxiety of being able to you, you can't go to the store reliably anymore and think that they're going to have toilet paper or hand sanitizer or paper towels, things that you would normally take for granted. That's not there. And forget that you might not even be able to get to get in the store. They got lines and all of that, all of that disruption to homeostasis and how things normally are. And then it's unending. You don't know how long it's going to last. You get frustrated. You get angry. You get a whole lot of race soldiers. How do I take out my frustration, my anxiety? What makes me feel like a man? What makes me feel like a woman on the plantation? Bossing around a nigra. And I just got a brand new gun. Ooh, I'm ready to go out. They had those reports about white people snitching about the uh, lockdown. They said people were calling. They had thousands of reports. Like this wasn't an isolated thing. Thousands of reports of white people calling in. St- Bob is not staying at home. He's not isolated. He's not social distancing. They said they had lots of reports of that nature. Imagine, oh, got this nigger out here. He's not social distancing or whatever else it is. He's stealing mailboxes, looting, prying open mailboxes so he can steal the packages out of them. Show off my new gun. Got my Sig Sauer. I'm ready. I haven't been able to go to the range because they got the shutdown. But I still want to go out and get it in my hand. Boss this nigra around. I suspect it's quite a bit of that. uh, That either could happen, is happening, all of the above. Uh, The uh, situation with Mr. Ahmaud Arbery, lots of those. They mentioned Trayvon Martins. It's tons of those situations. It was uh, one in North Carolina that was similar. There's some young children. I think they had a party or whatever and one of the males he left and was walking home. I think he walked across somebody's yard or whatever and a, black, a white person killed him. I think that was in like 2015, 2016. You have those incidents happen all the time. Bo Morrison in Wisconsin I think was similar. They had a party late at night. He walked across somebody white person's garage or whatever and they killed him all the time. Now all this hyper anxiety and stress and and all the rest of it like oh yeah just any excuse any reason Mr. Fuller talked about that back in uh, 68 when Dr. King was assassinated he said he talked to white people on the job who said oh yeah we were hoping one of you all would get excited and come over here call yourselves ride for the king want to try out my new scope just got it that attitude prevails. Lots of new gun owners out here now. So, oh, yeah. I'm just itching. That's what they call itchy, tr- itchy trigger finger. Just itching for the opportunity to get out here and try my firearm. That was what I thought. Once I was able to kind of get back in 
in the house and process, lock the door and kind of process like, wow, I am pretty sure that that white fella did not just have a cell phone because he was so aggressive. Like he did not, or at least you all can tell me, right? The number 605-313-5164, the code 564-943-POUND. You all can tell me, but I have never in all my time on the planet seeing a situation where someone was at a mailbox and I have, I'm currently in a house, but I have lived in uh, an apartment. So you have like uh, group mailboxes, right. That are out publicly. I have never witnessed a situation or observed someone where I thought, Hey, this is a suspicious dude. I need to go confront the like, Hey, 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 where do you live? Where's your mailbox key? You got some other like I have never had a situation like I wouldn't even know what to look for. Like unless the person had like a, a crowbar or something and they were like Jimmy. And, and and then if that was what I saw, I would not be. Oh, yeah. Let me go confront this person. I don't have a jail. Like, what am I going to do? I don't have handcuffs like I would just call the police like, hey, uh, I think this person might be breaking into the mailbox, had on such and such and such, blah, blah, blah. That's what I thought the, the logical thing to do was, right? Like even in the 911 call with Trayvon Martin, right? The killer calls the police. I'm pretty sure that they said, we don't need you to follow. We got it. You called. We will come check it out. I thought that was the procedure, not. I'm going to go confront this. But that's what these race soldiers, when we say white people are dangerous, I almost started today's program with that segment. The program we did a few years back, white people can ruin your life in five minutes. White people are so dangerous. You have no idea. Like I said, I don't know. Is this an enforcement officer? They do have uh, black SUVs here in Seattle, I think, and other places. Is this an enforcement officer? Is this just a race soldier, no badge, who's armed, who has a butcher knife, who has other race soldier friends who are waiting out. I'm going to go check him out. The coon gets rowdy. You all jump out. You just have no idea. White people are so dangerous. And after I got back, like I said, I was reflecting on that, like, wow, like, (laughs) I mean, Me saying nothing, because sometimes if you ignore a white person, that'll get them upset, too. Like, you know, who's this uppity nigger, you know, think he is like not going to answer me when I'm speaking. You hear me talking to you, boy? You hear me talking to you, girl? You're not going to talk to me? That could be enough, you know, to rile them up. I haven't been in too many situations where it like escalates dramatically or dangerously. But generally, that's the course that I take to not say anything. But I mean, if I had gotten rowdy. Who do you think you are? Who are you talking to me? Get away! You know, if it had been something like that, like man, I suspect this fella had more than a phone. He could have pulled out a gun, and bam, that would have been that. I probably wouldn't have even got a hashtag. Just been like, oh, that militant nigger. I'm glad he's gone. Caused all that mischief, terrorizing white women at the yoga studio with bricks and all the rest. Of it. I wouldn't even have got a hashtag. I could be wrong. That's my suspicion, but I am of the opinion, and I think there's evidence. <laughs> Ahmad Arbery not that I'm in the following all these different situations but I mean that is what they're talking about pick anyone that you like Trayvon Martin in these in many of these situations in my view you can even uh, I forgot the officer uh, who did the barrel roll remember that one in Texas McKinney Texas where it was the young black female teenager at the pool and he was rolling on the ground and all the rest of they are not coming badge or no they are not coming to these situations with any sort of I'm looking to de-escalate I'm investigating that is not how they're coming to these situations they're coming to these situations with a black person I hope this coon gets out of line so I can go upside their head I hope this coon gets out of line so I can let off a few rounds that what my man Norm Stamper say get your nigger knocker that's the way that they're coming like oh yeah i'm gonna get my opportunity to take down this coon say something oh you robbing that man yes he is yes he is yes he is say something say something 
that's the way that they're coming to these interactions. And I say that when we talk about being codified, like, man, in this situation, you are not looking to go out and have any sort of verbal altercation with a white person. If they started, if it's a traffic situation, parking situation, they had that one down at Florida. The mindset with any of these should be, man, I am looking to get out of this interaction as quickly as possible, as safely as possible. I am not raising my voice. I'm not yelling. I'm going to talk to this white person as though they might have a gun and or 50 other white people who are waiting to jump out of the bushes, jump out of vehicles, helicopters, even who knows, waiting for me to make a wrong move or I might not even have to make a wrong move waiting to jump out and pounce on me. That's the way that we should be there, especially under this crisis situation. I don't know about everywhere uh, in the world. I don't think they allow citizens to have firearms in the way they do. Like, I don't know if they've had a surge in firearm sales in like the UK or France, Nigeria. I don't know if that's the case, you know, everywhere in the world, Brazil, hopefully we'll be able to check in with some of those folks and we'll see here in the United States. Oh yeah. Well, you got a lot of armed white people who are angry out on the streets daily <laughs> with their guns, mad, a lot of white people who at least give the excuse that they're whining. We don't have any money. Can't get our business going. Can't take care of our family. Or I'm stressed. I got my children home. I don't like being around children all this time. And I got them plucking my nerves around me for the rest of the year. And I'm mad about that or whatever. It's disrupting me being able to get my Amazon packages and all the rest of it. You know, I like watching the Coons play basketball. And you mess that up. I like calling that Coon LeBron James names. And now I might not have that for the rest of the year. Whatever it is, them being disgruntled, anxious, stressed, or just dedicated to the system, the sickness of white supremacy in this environment, man, you will have a lot of white people where it will be quick to escalate to something hostile and racist against black people. Have that in mind like it's been they've had these different situations or just over social distancing where they had a black female I think she was like 86 she was in a hospital and they said she wasn't social distancing she got close to a white person and the white person like shoved her down and killed her I think she like struck her head as she fell the black female but this just happened the last few weeks ago like the increased host- the hostility is already there that's like default in the system of white supremacy racism but these circumstances expect increased hostility increased likelihood of violence under normal circumstances you're not looking to get any any sort of you know yelling shouting altercation threatening a white person none of that planned ignore like i said i would have probably just done that not said anything but it continued and continued and he wasn't leaving just hey man call the police that's what I'm a, I'm a looter. Yes, I'm a looter. I'm coming for your mailbox next. Yes. Don't say all that. But if that's your conclusion, call the police. Right. They have people. That's what they're trained to do. Come get looting niggers. That's what they live for. To stuff the jails with looters like me. So call the police. Right. You got me red handed. Call the police. That's not what they wanted. I want a confrontation. They get excited about that sort of thing. So. Be mindful, like tell your children, I think I've been concluding many of the broadcasts over the last month or so saying, you know, hey, I would not be outside uh, after sun goes down once it gets dark. I just wouldn't. Um, I would be very strategic. I think that's the exact word I've been using. I'd be very strategic uh, about where I am. Uh, I wouldn't be out at the park and the beach in the evening. I know it's summertime. Uh, or excuse me, I know it's spring about to be summer and the weather's getting warm. It's warm today here in Seattle. Beautiful day. It's supposed to be in the 80s uh, this week. It's May. You know, that's what's supposed to be happening. All of that said, I would not be out at the park uh, once the sun goes down. Now, if you want to be out, if the park is even open in your area and you can lawfully be there, socially distance and all the rest of it, fine. But once the sun goes down, I would not be out at the park. I would not be hanging out none of that like I would be at the house 
just is not a time where you want to be out dallying all the rest. I would try and get my shopping done uh, before it gets dark. I would not want to be stopped and questioned uh, by enforcement officials. Wouldn't want to be questioned by my neighbors or any random white people uh, while I'm, you know, out and about either about are you an essential worker and all the rest of it. Like, I just don't think this is uh, in terms of what happened to me at the mailbox. I don't think that is uh, an anomaly uh, at all. Uh, I think that's probably the climate that we're going to be in for the foreseeable future. He, like I said, he didn't say anything to me about the coronavirus. He didn't have a mask on. He didn't have gloves. No concern at all. It was all white supremacy, racism and standard operating procedure. We got a looting nigra and I am ready to roll. Might have had backup to it. In fact, like I said, he had a, a SUV. I believe the windows were tinted. There may have even been other vehicle in the car. Like I said, this wasn't, you know, my plan. I didn't have surveillance. I wasn't watching, sitting on the side of the road, watching his vehicle uh, for the first five minutes. I was thinking eggplant <laughs> going to cook. Let me get the mail. And then he rolls up out of nowhere. So, I mean, it's just so many factors uh, in the system of racism. Just be really, really careful. I would share that if you have offspring uh, and what have you, uh, if you're, you know, essential working and their children at home going to be at home for the foreseeable future uh, I would really try to talk to them seriously um, this is not a time uh, where you want to be out and about certainly not or you want to be out strategically with what you're doing if you get stopped by anybody questioned by anybody take it seriously uh, in that situation because you just don't know uh, if this person uh, means to harm you if this person is looking for a violent altercation uh, whatever they're talking about try to maintain distance uh, and choose your words very carefully if you say anything at all in many instances saying nothing is probably going to be the best policy especially you don't know this person you never had any interaction with this person you don't know what their agenda is in many instances saying nothing is the best policy let me see if I can get out of here especially if it looks like it's escalating you know they're saying nigger anything that looks like oh yeah this looks like this could go bad in about 30 seconds let me see how I can get out of here with that I don't need to say nothing there's no saving face none of that <laughs> you're a victim of racism you're subject to white supremacy is no face to save you just want to try try to stay as safe as you possibly can all of that said um if folks you know have any thought like i said i don't i don't say that this is the best way to handle the situation uh maybe the best thing to do once somebody comes up and you've been accosted like that maybe the best thing to do is immediately stop uh and you know either running your well i was at the house it'd be running the house uh or running your vehicle and leave maybe that's what to do um yeah i don't i don't know if folks have you know thoughts on the best way to handle it maybe you definitely should not say call the police you know because like i said he could have called the police and it could have went way worse i'm not sure uh but i feel like it at least in this instance that was where things changed and he began to backpedal and eventually exited it from the point where i said call the police but i at least i hope i shared the logic of why i said that um if i had to do over again would i say call the police Uh, probably, uh, yeah, maybe unless some folks have some interesting counter racist logic as to why that should not be used. Uh, probably, I'd probably go with the planned ignoring. Uh, and if it's something criminal, you know, you're, I've been, you know, you broke into this car or whatever, call the police. Not going to sit here and adjudicate. I'm not going through, uh, the citizen's arrest and, and trying to prove to you and evidence that I didn't do this or, or whatever the case is. Call the police if, you know, that's your conclusion. I think, at least in my view, that might help circumvent the making it an altercation with this random white person, uh, and trying to attack them and, you know, deny their allocations and, and get into a dispute with them. You're right. I'm a criminal. Call the police. There are people that are paid to handle this, right? That's my thinking. Unless folks, you know, see something incorrect about that. The picture, like I said, too, I, I, I have seen where sometimes that can't escalate. I did get my phone out and take pictures of his vehicle. Uh, maybe that's not what to do either. Uh, maybe you just uh, memorize the plate. I could have done that and call the police. I don't know. Maybe I should have called the police. I didn't think about that to, to report the situation, make a report myself uh, of being harassed, checking my own mailbox. 
that might be a good one too. Uh, but if folks have any, uh, I reckon suggestions, if you, if you have a, a better way of handling that, uh, if you have had to, uh, I guess, stop someone who you thought was breaking into a mailbox, I don't know. Like I said, I've, I've never in my life, I, I can't even think of a time where I even remotely thought, hey, I think she's trying to break into that mailbox. Like never, ever, ever, uh, much less confronted someone. So if you have, if you've seen that, if you feel like, oh, yeah, that's normal response just to make sure that's what a good neighbor does. Make sure that this person, if you have, please let me know. I'll be set straight. And or if you unfortunately have been stopped, if someone thought you were breaking into the mailbox, you can share about that as well. Uh, but the main point, I just feel like the the danger, uh, the sickness is racism white supremacy and with all of the armed angry protesting white folks it just seems like they would be really itching to take out all their frustration on a random black person safety safety uh i'll check and see if folks have any thoughts make sure uh maybe i'm i'm being ignorant maybe uh you know folks might have a better way of how you handle uh such a situation uh and or uh critique of uh, my way of handling that situation. Like I said, I, I don't say uh, that was the best way. I hadn't planned it. My mind was on eggplant, not counter racism. And you know, white people are going to come up and, and accost me for checking the mailbox here. Uh, let's see. Uh, retired firefighter, uh, any suggestions, reviews? Uh, if you've had to attack somebody that you thought was breaking in the mailboxes, you can share that too. Greetings, Mr. Gus T. Renegade. Yes, sir. Uh, I would say, I, I, of course, I'm, I'm, I am not going to uh, double back and, and criticize <laughs> what a victim of racism or white supremacy does to uh, save their own life. Uh, I uh, just have a uh, theory, uh, which I think is based on logic. The uh, idea in mind is whatever is considered to be a danger, whether it's a virus, whether it's a fire, whether it's a white person uh, <laughs> or a black person, uh, uh, is to keep distance, to keep distance. Uh, as soon as that person, uh, because I'm pretty sure you picked up on it the moment the vehicle showed up and the white person came out, is to provide distance. Distance of what? Distance that would, would render you as safe as possible. Uh, I am not going to criticize what you said. I would say if there's, there's, I don't think nobody can come up with anything that would definitely state, well, that would be the key to that quote-unquote lock uh, uh, as far as what I said. Uh, only thing I would say is probably you'll probably be logical if it's a minimum of what you say. And uh, I certainly don't think the question, the, the, the statement uh, called the police uh, was incorrect. But at the same time, as soon as you considered a danger to keep distance, in, in other words, uh, if you don't have any borders on you, like a wall or anything like that, just go in that opposite direction from that person. The moment that you that you uh, uh, suspect some sort of uh, potential uh, problem, uh, walk walk away with your eyes on that. Did he? Did he? Did he have this? Did it? Was his shirt in his pants? Mm, I don't. Or can recall. you recall? I don't recall. Okay, well, that's that's another thing. If the person if the person did not have his shirt in his pants, he probably was armed. He probably was armed. Uh, you be you you probably would be surprised uh, of, of how much of weaponry that a person can carry on them without you know no noticeable uh, no noticeable uh, 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 understanding of it from whoever that weapon is on them, but is supposed to be against. Uh, but, uh, just off the mere fact that, uh, person got out of a SUV and approached you, uh, is danger, is potential danger enough. And I would, I would, I don't know if you did or not, 
you know, I'm not saying you did, you didn't do it. Uh, I would immediately start uh, creating more distance. Uh, the experts say that uh, the use of a firearm, the uh, logical use of a firearm is somewhere around three to five feet. I would increase that distance. Uh, it, it, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not stating about running, literally running, but I'm saying in, in, a, in a casual way to keep the distance between you and that, and that, and that threat, is what I'm saying, would be uh, something to do. Uh, the less that you do say, uh, I would say that uh, that would be uh, uh, the best policy. Uh, and I don't see anything wrong about you uh, making the statement about calling the police. I don't. I don't see anything wrong. Uh, facial expression. It should be one of. I, 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 this may not be a correct uses of words, but an even kind of look on your face. You know, not one of fear or of advert anger. You know, but just you know this. A, a, a look of calmness on your face, looking at person, look, look uh, well, not necessarily looking right at the person, but 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 uh, having a particular look on your face would would also probably uh, have some matter of importance. And it's in the, but like I said, the moment that you suspect a danger, not the white guy that you do yoga with, <laughs> you you probably know that person, but this this strange white person, I would create distance start creating distance, you know, from them. How does that sound? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the distance. Uh, get distance as quick as or as soon as you make an assessment that they're dangerous and uh, saying as little as possible. Like I said, I'm a big advocate of, hey, nothing. If nothing needs to be said, hey, zero, little as possible. But as little as you possibly have to say, like, it's not going to be, especially once you have any suspicion that this might be dangerous. Like, no, this is not the time for, you know, let me give you my speech and views on racism and what I think about white people. And then like, right. nah, none of that. Closing, closing the distance would, would alarm the idea that you are becoming emotional more so than thinking. In other words, you, you're angry. How dare he comes to me and, say, and, and, and get out of his car, this honky get out of his car and blah, 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 blah. You know, and you start closing. That, that, that's going to render you to do something that you need the most of, which is thinking. Which is thinking and, and try your best to be as calm, calm in that process as possible. But like I said, if there's going to be any immediate maneuver and that's creating distance, creating di people who are quote unquote experts in martial arts state that if the best, the best uh, martial art is distance. <laughs> that's, that's what most of them say that I hear. That's the best martial art. You, you need to have a black belt in that. It's distance between yourself and that threat. You know, and, and, then, and then, you know, if there's something that you need to do in the aftermath of it, meaning, meaning that uh, you, 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 you witness this person's tag or his identification, then, you know, at the, at the calmness of your apartment or house or whatever that you're allowed to stay in, you, you, call, you call that particular authority and, and ask questions, you know, as far as they're concerned. That, that's be the best thing. Uh, did you, one thing, did you, uh, did you re read my, my text? Let's see. Did I send? Looking at the... It's on uh, BSO uh, Sheriff uh, Gregory Tony. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not a. Oh, a okay. Big, it's, it, it might be something interesting to to uh, read or look at at some. Not. I'm not necessarily talking about today, but at some time in the future, mm. it may be uh, something. I got it from Mister Clark. He sent it to me, so I decided to send it to some other people. Sad. Yes, we'll have to uh, review victims of racism. Uh, but distance, distance. Uh, I yes. think that is always uh, spectacular. Uh, if you, it looks like 
this person is looking for a confrontation. It looks like this could be heading yeah. towards something that is not going to be safe uh, for you. Like, yes, distance. See if you can get out of there. Uh, th- th- I will say this was a little tricky because this fella is at like his car is literally parked at the house. So <laughs> like I was thinking like I'd be going home, but I'm not really away from you per se because you're parked here like the most of the time you I would hope you're not being accosted at your the place where you're allowed to stay but Henry Louis Gates Dr. Cowbell Henry Louis Gates that did happen too so I can't exactly say that that's uncommon uh there is no sanctuary in the system of white supremacy but hopefully uh most of us will not have too many encounters at your actual residence so yeah, that would be the pers- the place ideally be like, oh yeah, I can get the home base. Uh not oh man, yeah. the racist. Yeah, I don't know how far I don't know how far that sh- that the place of residence was from that mailbox. But that's where that 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 would of course that would be uh uh objective number one. But if it's not possible you know, somewhere else. Any 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 it was doing daytime, right? Yes, sir. I think you said. Yeah, uh, uh, if the, of course, if if the if the mailbox area, uh, if the, if his car or his person was not in between you and that place of residence, that's what I that's where I would end up being at. He his, he literally would have to have his person in between myself and that place of residence for me not to make that number one. And that's not necessarily is the only option. Because if he he is in between that, then I would create I would create another trail of distance, and then I would start using the cell phone. You That's know. a good idea. Or 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 bringing it or bringing it to somebody's attention. Yeah. That is. But a anyway, good idea. just a thought. Using the cell phone, that's a good idea. It was daytime, uh, like I said, when this happened, still sunny and everything. So, um, yeah, there. I, I don't recall if, like, other people were sitting outside um, type of thing where it would have been easy to go and, and alert somebody that, hey, you know, this fella is uh, harassing me. You know, can you call the police or witness or, you know, whatever to get more eyes uh, on what's happening with the situation. Uh, but I mean, it was still sunny, so I, I don't think it would have been too hard, um, to be able to get somebody else. Um, it, I had to, where he was parked, I had to walk around his SUV to get to the gate. So it wasn't, it wasn't a far walk. And I'm pretty sure like when he pulled up, when he came over, he pulled his phone, like, what are you doing here? Uh, if I had, immediately like just closed the mailbox grabbed my packages groceries uh not said anything to him at all i think i could have just walked around him and went in the house i think um yeah yeah i think i could have managed that i don't know i would have it would have been hard i would have had to take my eyes off of him it would have been like having to kind of turn sideways a little bit to kind of look back and then walk so that I could get around his house and then get in uh, to hope that nothing escalates. But I think I could have accomplished that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Because from, from the, a lot of the cases that I have, uh, 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 saw or read, uh, or in some cases even, uh, came to on a on an emergency call uh the the two the two parties the two parties became involved emotionally mm. at some point in time and that's going to compromise the person that the person that is that is the innocent person that that's going to compromise their position in other words when you get when you go from when you go from thinking to uh, anger or emotional, you know. And the bottom line is, you want he want to be able to survive the moment, 
Mm-hmm. That's the bottom line. You want to be able to survive the moment. You know, that sort of thing. That's that's the that's the immediate goal uh, is to be able to do that. And so, you know, that, that's just some suggestion. It's, it's distance, distance. I mean, uh, uh, every every weapon has a distance. You know, I mean, of course, somebody with a knife. Uh, then the distance is uh, a safe distance. It may be less in feet as opposed to a gun, uh, <laughs> even as opposed to a nuclear bomb, I guess. You probably have to go to another planet. But uh, 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 but uh, d- d- distance, distance would be my, my thought on that. And, and, and in this case, it's inside that, that, uh, that uh, place called an apartment or a house or duplex or whatever, wherever the, the name of the type of place that you stay at. That's what I would think. Now, <laughs> now whether or not I, I'll come up to tomorrow and make, and make a worse, make all kinds of worse mistakes and you have to read about me in the newspaper or something. <laughs> but that's what I hope I would do. i put it that way. Because I, I have made mistakes also, big time. Managing those emotions is key. Like I said, you definitely, uh, whatever you do, you want to make sure it doesn't devolve into a shouting and yelling at the person and uh, you actually minimizing dislike. I'm going to get up in this person's face and put my face. Who do you like? You definitely do not. Like I said, you just don't know. Like I, I thought he was armed. Like I, I don't recall if he had uh, his shirt untucked or what have you, but it was enough that that was my thinking was I think this fella is armed. A lot of white people brag. It's always good to assume. Yeah. It's always good to assume that, that, that the person is armed. Exactly. Always. Especially if it's a white person. And under these circumstances, like I said, where they're looking for a confrontation, if you have a phone, he could have easily parked his SUV on the side of the road, called the police. Boop. He could have gave them an easy, full description. We got this colored fella. Uh, It's a white neighborhood. He's over here, Jimmy, in the mailbox. Boom, boom, boom. He could have given the address and everything. It would have been super easy. They could have tracked me down. Whammo. Like, that's A-plus citizen, stopping crime, neighborhood watch. That's not what he wanted. He was looking for a confrontation. That's why I say in those type of situations, you should assume that the... Or at minimum, if they're not armed they are probably more prepared for some sort of violence or escalation than you are because they instigated all of this. You are out, you know, I am thinking about eggplants. You are doing whatever on the system of racism. They are, Oh, call it fella. Mm, Let's go get, let's go get something started. That's what they're thinking. So they're already. And when Dr. Cambon, he talks about we're at a disadvantage. If you want to even put it in Dr. Welsing chess context, I see the other folks will get their hands. That is white goes first. This was not, I came out with a plan. Oh yeah. I don't like that. You know, fad down the road there. I'm going to get him. I hate that fella. I'm going to wait till he comes by. I'm going to play like, that was not the case at all. He came out with a plan, whether he came up with it five minutes ago, five seconds ago, he was the one that started all of this. That's why I'd say, Oh yeah, he's probably much more prepared for things to escalate than I am, especially he's coming with aggression. He's not coming in no way. Hey, how you doing? In no way am I thinking you could be a lawful resident who is out here checking your mail on a Sunday evening uh, up to nothing but good intentions and going in and make a nice meal for the evening. Like, couldn't be that at all. You are some no good Nick, some outlaw Negro defiling our good neighborhood. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Princess. Uh, Do you have suggestions thoughts again now if any of this is reasonable if you folks hey looting mailboxes is a big problem in our neighborhood and i have to be mindful and keep an eye out to make sure that my mail doesn't if that is the case well then let me stand corrected like i just that hasn't been my experience but if that is let us know we'll get that on the record uh princess line should be open uh you should be with us as well good evening can i be heard yes ma'am I guess uh, it's good to know that you are doing well. Good evening to everyone. Uh, I would just say that overall, I think you um, 
you know, uh, work through this situation uh, the best uh, we all can under this circumstance. I don't think it was wrong for you to indicate that you wanted to or you told him to uh, contact the police. In fact, I think I've done that a couple of times just to call white people's bluff. Um, and I think it worked in your favor because I guess I could say from what you described, you were in a more controlled situation. So you already had assessed the level of danger or threat. It wasn't a, like a situation where you had several police officers responding. So uh, whether you realized it or not, you may have already kind of sized up the situation. And by you saying that, it kind of uh, put the ball in his court where he would have to, uh, you know, either take you up on that offer or, you know, kind of back down. And I think it kind of worked in your favor. And I can recall an incident that was on the news with, uh, I don't know where it initially took place. It was probably in the Midwest somewhere where it was a news reporter that was covering a story uh, about um, the, uh, the housing market or something. And uh, they had gotten um, called on by some vigilant suspected racist white person um, because they assumed that that person uh, was a burglar and this, that, and other. But when they confronted the white person, he was in his car. He or she was in their car or something. And uh, they sat there and they called uh, the the um, police and reported that, you know, someone was breaking into a house and this, that, and other one. In fact, it was just a news reporter covering a story. So, like you said, under any other circumstances, if they were really truly in the best interest of uh, helping, they don't have to take the law in their own hands. You could simply place a call. Again, you don't hear black people doing any type of vig vigilante type acts. This is something almost exclusive to, to white people because they just think that they could just, you know, take the law into their own hands. But I think you handled the situation good, so I'm glad everything worked out. Trying to get through them safely as best we can. That is always uh, the objective. Uh, try to get through safely. Um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that's kind of how I thought of it. Like, hey, you know, let's let's fast forward. <laughs> like, you know, if that's your thought process that there is criminal activity happening here, what are we supposed to do if there's criminal activity? I thought you're supposed to call the police, not. I'm going to go out and apprehend the person myself unless you're an enforcement official, which like I said, he didn't identify himself. He could have been the SUV and all that. Maybe that did cross my mind. And even after, you know, I had more time to kind of assess and look at his vehicle and everything could have been, um, but he didn't identify himself. So, um, yeah, like, yeah, the calling the, like, Hey, you think criminal activity is happening? Let's call the police. You know, why waste time? You got a phone. You could do that right now. If you're not going to call the police, well, then, yeah, let's run. <laughs> like we're not we're not playing uh, where you get to be citizen cop, uh, pretend cop or uh, security for the neighborhood and get to interrogate everybody like, you know, either you're going to call the police or, yeah, we're done. Distance, distance, trying to get out of the situation. But, yeah, just trying to safely handle these situations as best we can using logic, uh, not being emotional and, uh, yeah, recognizing danger. Like I said, these folks, when they come, I think, and, and particularly when they come aggressive like that, like this is, you know, highly dangerous, like recognize that process it in that manner, like immediately, this is a highly dangerous encounter and I'm going to try to extricate myself as you know <laughs> carefully as possible um yeah and they could have backups say that can't say that enough you never know with white people they form like voltron and that backup could be just random white people 
who see what looks like a confrontation between a white person and a black person or as a, this could have been planned like they could have Bob and Jenny and Roger in the SUV in the back or in other I mean you just never know with white people like unless you planned all of this you got up Sunday morning and took out a pad or took out your tablet and came up with a whole sketch of how you wanted all this to happen and play out at the mailbox and boom unless that happened like psh, I'm going to try to get myself out of here as safely quickly as possible uh, let's see the black African Hand should be up. Much obliged, uh, Princess. The Black African. Uh, thoughts, commentary. Still looking if any folks, you know, mailbox theft is a problem and you have to do the same thing to make sure people are not running off with your mail. Make sure you speak up. The Black African. Uh, hey, Gus. Um, yeah, I guess the, yeah, I haven't noticed any um, mailbox theft. I've never even thought about, like, Thought of, like when I see somebody at the mailbox, I've never thought of oh, that person is stealing, or there's a possibility that that person is stealing. Um, but yet, yeah, um, it sounds like you um, you came out of a really dangerous situation. Um, sounds like this person was really um, determined and dedicated to doing something uh, harmful to you. Um, when I first when I was listening to you, I thought maybe. Um, you could have asked him a question, like sort of like, um, like should we call? Like, do you want to call the police, or should we call the police? But then, when I thought about it more, but then that sort of brings on like a conversation with this person, so that's that creates more danger. So, the statement to me sounds better than a question, because you're sort of like putting the responsibility on that person. You're sort of cutting it off sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I think you did well. I think you did well to come out of that, um, without being harmed physically. Yeah. And, and that's all I had to share. Thank you. Much obliged, much obliged. Yeah, I definitely do not want, you know, we're not looking for a dialogue here. I think retired firefighter said, but uh, conversation, like absolutely not looking for long conversation if anything is going to be said uh at all uh like i said my thought process with that was yeah let's fast forward things like i'm a looter you got me call the police <laughs> like unless you're an enforcement officer yourself uh and you you know are going to cuff me right now same thing we don't need to call the police because they're already here uh but other than that call the police you got me that's what's supposed to happen not whatever else whatever you have intended uh, coming coming up here um yeah uh apparently mailbox if folks uh if mailbox theft is a problem make sure you do not you know just hang out silently uh 605-313-5164 the code 564-943 pound press star 61 if you would like to participate particularly no spectators mailbox theft is a problem that's something you have to contend with or at least are mindful about you keep an eye out people look like they're lingering too long and, and don't have a key um, but yeah just uh, I suspect there'll probably be more of these type of incidents like people were saying when I talked to Dr. Rasayan he was saying that somebody had or people had gotten to some sort of brawl uh, at the store uh, over items I guess they were low on insert whatever hand, san hand sanitizer whatever it was uh, I suspect there could easily be more of these types of uh, confrontations uh, out in public over anything uh, just because you know you'll have people that are angry that are upset that are anxious stressed whatever whatever the excuse is especially if we're talking about racists whatever the excuse is that they'll use uh, that there could easily be more of these type of skirmishes uh, I would say make every effort to avoid them. Like if you know you're upset, you're having a rough day, things have been rough and all that. Fine. Uh, as soon as it looks like something is going to happen, I am getting out of here. Like I am not saying a word. This is not escalating at all because I could just see a lot of things getting very out of hand 
And I just think you have a lot of folks uh, who this will be justification for things getting out of hand and getting violent, Uh, whether it's, you know, with their hands, whether they have a firearm, whatever it is uh, like, it'll be, you know, I'm I'm upset and, you know, forget all the word and let's get down with when we're done with the words. Let's get to direct violence. Uh, It just seems it feels like it would be more of that. You got white people in the streets with firearms daily across the country <laughs> talking about their they're mad and COVID-19 is a lie and you know all the rest of it across the country uh, to just have armed gangs hoodlums uh, where they were storming the Capitol in Michigan yelling at enforcement officials like that sort of uh, environment like yeah I think there's a lot of hostility so just be mindful of that in any of these confrontations, particularly anything where you didn't start it. This is being instigated. Somebody is coming up and approaching you for any reason, a parking space or, you know, I don't think you're supposed to be in this area. You know, you're violating social distance. I've seen that, too, where they said, you know, there have been a lot of public skirmishes and things over social distancing. Somebody got too close or uh, wanted to uh, castigate somebody because they didn't have a mask on or didn't have gloves on and that sort of thing like planned ignoring like I would not be getting into a debate with somebody about you know what you're doing why you don't have a mask on uh, are you in a sense none of that like keep it moving keep it moving that right there like us sitting there and getting into a long conversation that's not social distancing right there we're breathing on each other and everything like I'm not getting involved in any of that and I think that was even some of the suggestions that were given out when they uh, some of the media reports news reports were talking about this they said yeah they would uh, just recommend not responding if someone is trying to you know fuss at you uh, about being too close or you don't have a mask on or gloves or whatever whatever they think it is uh, let's see uh, six other folks uh, have any comments they want to make sure they get in number again 605 313-5164 the code 564-943-POUND press star 61 if you have suggestions thoughts uh, any improvements ways you think it might be better uh, to handle that sort of situation uh, folks have any thoughts feel free Hey guys, quick question. I was wondering, do do you do you have the the next door app? No. Tell us about the next door app. Um. So the next, I was thinking about. I think there was, well, it was a while ago where, um, oh, never mind. But the next door app is sort of like it's an app. It's like a neighborhood app. It well, it's an app where people in your neighborhood join the app and. It's like a community, well, the way that they've set it up is supposed to be for, like, um, notifications about what's happening in your so-called community, um, things that law enforcement are going to be doing, events, that kind of thing. Um, but what I have noticed with it is that a lot of people post, um, uh, like, people, like, like let's just say somebody's, de- like, um stole like a package from their house or something like that they'll show like the video on there or they will it it it's it, it become sort of like a like a place where i would say like white people and sort of like non-black people sort of just talk about crime or so-called crime and so like when i got it i thought it was just going to be just a community kind of thing that's what somebody has suggested that you could just learn more about your so-called community, like your neighborhood and events. But it's like, just like, uh, it's almost all about like crime. I see they post images of black males, like, like walking by their house or like, you know, saying things like, oh, there was this black male that was walking and he had a black hoodie, that kind of thing. So you can like sort of like gauge what's going on in your neighborhood based off of that like and know like certain you can even know like where in your neighborhood certain things might happen or what people are thinking um it's an interesting app just you can just learn more about um just people practicing white supremacy racism in your neighborhood you're like your specific neighborhood i think they um they have some kind of feature that 
where you're approved to join. Um, I don't know if they use GP. I don't know what they use, but it will know that you're in that exact neighborhood. So, yeah, I don't know if it's relevant for, for this show, but I thought about it when I guess this person was talking about, you know, about the neighborhood or something like that. Hmm. Fascinating. I, I have heard of it, but I do not have that app on my phone. Uh, but yes, I have heard about that and I've heard similar uh, reports uh, that people use uh, that app for white supremacist purposes. Uh, black random black person walking through the neighborhood. I might be on with the mailbox encounter like, you know, surly Negro does apparently live here. But, you know, he's still a Negro. <laughs> we'll continue harassing him for, you know foreseeable future but yeah that uh, that uh might be a good uh piece of information just to check it out to see yeah because he said there's crime in the neighborhood like yeah maybe they have postings about that maybe you know there is rampant mailbox theft uh in the area or you know other forms of crime like that would be good to know uh he didn't he didn't mention that he didn't say you know you should get on uh the next door app and see you know we've been posting about it and it's all kind of that that would have oh okay wow you're being a good he didn't mention that uh but yeah i will i will check i will download and see uh if they have anything posted for the neighborhood and i'll even see if i'm there as i said he did have his phone out so he might have been uh posting you know looking to have me posted up there as well um but i'm i'm not surprised birds chirp dogs bark white people practice racism white supremacy rona or no uh did other folks uh who are with us have suggestions thoughts yes uh and where i stay at in uh beautiful miami gardens uh, uh we have a uh a group text I think that's that's basically what it is, a group text that call that is called Neighbors, that's ran by a uh, non white black female. Uh it's I mean it's all on her part voluntary, you know, as far as what she does. And uh she becomes a uh a uh, uh a person in between the local government meaning the city of Miami Gardens officials uh, and uh, residents, the residents that stays in the area where she's at. And we get uh, alerts from her, uh, uh, from those officials, elected officials, and on top of it, uh, the uh, residential uh, gossip uh, that may be in the area uh, and that may include... uh, uh, quote unquote crime of all different types. Uh, one would be surprised on how many people park their cars and don't lock the doors, <laughs> you know. And so, basically, someone who wants to uh, uh, take something out of your car, in a lot of cases, they don't even have to uh, break your glass. Uh, there was an old saying in the fire department: "Pry, uh, 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 pry before you try." Something like that, some kind of rhyme. In other words, check the check the lock. It may not be locked, you know that sort of thing. Before you bust the door down, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, basically, uh, in a lot of cases, uh, the uh, the person that wants to break into your car don't even have to bust your window. They just open the door because the person would get out their car and don't lock their door. You know, spend their whole time in their house going to sleep that night and not even locking their door and they have uh something of they consider to be valuable sitting right up on the seat of the car you know that sort of thing and so anyway she would alert she would alert uh uh the residents and and it also leaves it so you can uh you can uh, leave an alert on the uh on the uh uh, uh texting site also uh, I think I can recall I reported uh, uh, my uh, some white person threatened me uh, in one case to whereas uh, one of these people knocking on your doors, you know, trying to sell you something, something that I, I think is about 75 to 80 years outdated. Uh, and uh, basically he made some sort of comment that, that I consider to be threatening. 
uh, according to law enforcement, they don't consider it to be a threat, uh, but I do. And being it's involved with me directly, I'm going to uh, assume above law enforcement on that. But anyway, uh, she reported that, you know, and, and brought that to other people's attention and, and all other things that take place in the area where we stay at. Uh, she does that a lot. And it's, it's quite helpful. It quite, it's quite helpful. It can easily be organized. Uh, from where you uh, stay at, it can, something like that can easily be organized, and uh, so that's just an idea. Thank you. Much obliged, retired firefighter. Uh, I'm going to get the app, uh, the neighbor uh, neighborhood app. Uh, I uh, see a value uh, in having that sort of information. Uh, next door app, excuse me, next door app. Um, I see a value in having that sort of information if it's a text group text type thing or however it's set up uh, so that you can be informed uh, about what's happening. And if there is crime or whatever else, you know, race soldiers are coming around, you know, door to door and harassing us, you know, about whatever it is like all of that is is fantastic. Uh, Just I'm I'm not surprised that something like it like frequently happens all over the world, something that. A great use uh, could, you know, help a lot of folks and, and share constructive information ends up being uh, used to enforce, support white supremacy racism, where it just, you know, we're going to post Negroes walking through the neighborhood and all that. But absolutely like, yeah, something great to use. I'm going to get it next door app and other folks if they have it right on constructive and glad he said easy to set up and easy way to share information so that you know what's happening locally, especially these times. Definitely. Um, person who dialed in last four digits five one six four five one six four. Uh, do you have commentary, uh, observations, suggestions? Are they looting mailboxes in your region? May I be heard? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, uh, calling from California, and to answer your question, Gus. Uh, from what I see, no. Um, here in the um, uh, LA, South LA, South Central area, and um, everything seems to be very calm here for the time being. I do see more officers um, patrolling, more sheriffs to be specific. Um, I'm, I've personally been assigned to work from, from home telework, so I get to see a lot of my neighbors a lot more. Um, but answer your question, no, no looting going on here at the moment. Right on. Much appreciate the report from uh, California. We're supposed to be coordinating the uh, reopening of the states with you guys, uh, Washington State and California. Um, did you have any, I guess, suggestions on the best way to handle those type of confrontations if uh, a race soldier, or I guess it could be anybody else, uh, confronts you out publicly in kind of an aggressive, hostile way, a manner that you deem to be unsafe? Uh, any suggestions on the best way to ha- deal with those situations? Yes, um, I personally um, deal with hostile people uh, by leaving. Yes. Vacating the area. Um, I'm, I'm like 5'11", so um, I work out, so you know, I, I guess people may not want to have a confrontation with me. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but yeah, um, I don't say much to anyone when I when I am out and about. Um, but yeah, mainly just that. Um, keep myself and, you know, keep moving. Love it. Heard that from several folks. Retired firefighter. Logical, uh, minimal verbal commentary and then distance. Uh, Once you've assessed the situation is dangerous, get those feet moving, get to the vehicle or vacate that area as soon as possible without a whole lot of conversation like quality. Uh, Let's see. Much obliged. uh, Good sir. Report from California. Uh, let's see. Isatu, Isatu should be with us. Uh, did you have commentary suggestions? Uh, if they're looting mailboxes in your area, make sure to share that as well. Um, no, there's no looting of mailboxes. I thought that was 
like in the 80s or something like that. But um, uh, right now, the, the state is supposed to be opening us, and, and thank you um, uh, for this opportunity to speak. This is not a lot of um, outlets outside of Black, uh, Black Talk Radio and this um, program that we get an opportunity to speak on. I'm an avid listener of the Tom Hartman program, and I bring him up to say this, that whenever I call into his his show, I'm not given the opportunity to actually speak my mind fully. So that's why it's good for this t- type of platform because we have a different way of communicating um, non-white uh, people um, than they do, and oftentimes I'm not given the chance to actually get my whole point out, even when I'm trying to be concise. So, um, but anyway, uh, they've been protesting at the Capitol um, again because I live in Phoenix; it's the capital of Arizona. I've been here 20 years, and they've been protesting and wanting to open up the state and things like that. Me, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how to regulate my blood pressure for Pete's sake. But um, it's interesting, though, because yesterday my job called me, and they said that they have the uh, – I work with a temp agency, by the way, because here in Arizona there are a lot of um, permanent positions, but honestly it's you – know, I don't know. I, I think it's the whole politics of being so close to the border and immigration and – you know, the wages being kept so low and they don't want to pay people uh, properly because when I was in Nebraska, I didn't get paid what I'm getting paid here, and that was 20 years ago. But um, my job called me, and they said, uh, well, you were, we're going to sign you for the paid, the, what do they call this, the um, payment protection program, I think is what it's called. And are you still there? Man, we can hear you. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so one of the conditions of the of this program is that I have to accept work, uh, whether it's my what I'm what I was hired for in the first place. So I'm a cook, but in this in this hospitality temp agency, there's more than just cook positions available. There's dishwasher. There's maintenance. There's uh, sanitation, there's levels to this, okay? But I got hired as a cook. So when I asked my employer, I said, well, um, what if you call me with, for a dishwasher position? Because I don't do dishwashing, you know, and um, at, except for at home. But definitely, I, I have my own things. It's like a gag reflex to me. I can't wash anybody else's dishes unless I know them. So I, it's I've been like that forever. But um, she said, oh, well, you would have to take it. I was like, well, but you you have not hired me as a dishwasher. You've never paid me as a dishwasher. So in order to get qualified for this program, which means that I would get paid no matter if I get 40 hours a week or not, but at, at minimum wage until June 16th, okay? That's what the letter said that they emailed me in. And um, so it was, it was just very complicated to me and I was just like well um let me read it and you know let me get some research on this but if anybody has like any idea what this uh what do they call it paycheck paycheck protection program is I would love to hear some feedback on that because I'm uh I've jumped at the opportunity at first in my head because I have had no income since March 13th and then at the other the other side of that, because they already tried to send me into the hospital a month ago uh, saying I need to get vaccinated, and that was for a dishwasher opportunity. And I was like, I'm not going to take that, you know, and I told them that. I said, you know, I don't do dishwashing, and um, not only that, I don't want to be around people's saliva, and whether I have a, a, a mask on or not, it's just beyond gross to me. And, that, you know, I'm not knocking dishwashers because, we got some great dishwashers out there, but especially under this, and then they're saying I'm only going to get minimum wage. And it was just, it's, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's really odd to me, and I'm very confused about this situation. 
Um, I'm still looking for work, and um, I'm thank you, thank you for everybody that uh, gave input last time I called in because I have followed up with that, and that's pretty much it, guys. I just I, those things have been going on around here in Arizona, and I just needed some feedback if anybody had any. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, uh, Isatu. Uh, neutralizing workplace. Oh. Something stuck in my throat. Neutralizing workplace racism. Uh, every. Neutralizing workplace racism every Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, where we try to resolve exactly those type of problems or at least. Uh, help with a little bit more information now I will say on this program I do try to be pretty consistent about being uh, on topic with things Um, Not I'm always open for workplace racism but I do try to be on topic like we were talking about something specific and this is not really related to that even though this is important so I'll see if we have feedback but that is something I am consistent about on this broadcast like I don't know if that's the case with some of the other programs but I do try to get folks to be on topic with what the theme is that we're on Uh, I am not uh, off because I didn't come prepared to talk about the paycheck protection program so I'm not uh, qualified to speak about the ins and outs of that program, uh, although I have read uh, a little bit about it. But, yeah, I'm not qualified as an expert uh, to know all the ins and outs about how it works and then the specifications that you have to take anything, any sort of, of work that they offer uh, in order to qualify uh, for the program to make sure that you maintain your income. Uh, I will uh, do more research in preparation for Friday uh, to ask again to see if folks uh, know anything Friday and even see if maybe some folks are prepared by then. Just offhand, uh, folks that are listening, uh, any folks knowledgeable, done research, uh, or any work with the Paycheck Protection Program? Might be a little bit of homework for all of us take a little time as I said neutralizing workplace racism that's on uh, Fridays 8 p.m. Eastern 5 p.m. Pacific Uh, I will uh, take some time to research that program uh, just to see about some of the details uh, in terms of the the requirements like if you were not hired to be doing dishwashing and now they're saying that that's a part of the program and you know they tried to get you to do this dishwashing before and now they're going to be bringing that up again like oh yeah you got to do like uh, like I said, I'm not familiar with the details of the program, but yeah, that's one like where I regularly recommend with workplace racism. If they have a manual or if they even have it online, uh, like all of the what are all of the details? Let's read all the regulations and go point by point uh, to see what it says for yourself, because they might sometimes a lot. Of, they will take. Uh, one bit of information they'll tell you like what's on page 12 they won't give you all the information that's on page 13 14 15 etc so uh, I would read if you can get it if you can go online or what have you read as much as you can so that you know all the details and then you can go back and ask questions Uh, that'll be I guess that'll be something I can do make sure I read that before Friday uh, and that way you can put yourself in a position to be able to ask better questions uh, about this program. And if and, and it's such a short period of time. And see, that's one thing, like just the time frame, like if this is going to end on June 16th, like, wow, like, is this going to be worth it? And that time frame, like, yeah, once once you have more details about it, I suspect that'll help you make a more informed choice about how you want to proceed with all this. But, yeah, that's what I'll do between now and Friday. I'll do a little more digging on the PPP pr- uh, program. Uh, PPP and see uh, see what the details are of it are and then based on what you shared see if I have anything cogent to offer for Friday uh, double checking just to make sure any folks aren't familiar offhand PPP program lots to learn with uh, the new system they got new guidelines and all of that I do regularly recommend being up to date with policy and procedure and all that, but we'll check in again with that on Friday. See if we are improved and or see if the folks on Friday, if some of them are a little bit more informed about that program. Do we have any other suggestions just on the hostile confrontations? Uh, Just make sure we're all all satisfied. Any other suggestions on dealing with that thoughts? Best way to handle that without 
it escalating uh, so that you can get out of it as safely as possible. Grant. Uh, as I said, just assuming if it is a white person, uh, if they're coming with some hostility in any way, shape or form, uh, I would immediately ratchet that up, take it seriously as something dangerous uh, and try as best you can, regardless of what they say, <clears throat> to process and figure out what you want to do using logic. Uh, try not to get emotional. You can be upset about it. I was not pleased about, you know, being accosted at the mailbox. That is something to be upset about. But uh, in the moment, uh, you want to try to use logic as best you can so that you can, you know, get through that safely. Be able to check your mail if you got any goodies uh, or what have you. But try to get through those type of situations and just recognize them like, wow, like it is a very dangerous planet uh, right now for a lot of reasons. Uh, quote, Mr. Andrew Young again, the sickness is white supremacy. No doubts. No doubts. Uh, we will be here tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific for the book club session number five. Uh, Dr. Layla Africa, uh, nutritional destruction of black people. Uh, we're kind of at the end of chapter two. Basically, we'll go into chapter three tomorrow uh, and then Friday we will be here. Already know one topic, Paycheck Protection Program uh, for this Friday, neutralizing workplace racism. Uh, hopefully by then, see if I have anything cogent uh, to offer with Isatu situation uh, and what other folks are dealing with, trying to stay safe, uh, trying to stay employed, trying to maintain some hours and benefits and what have you with their work situation. That's Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Compensatory call in is this Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and then, as I said, uh, irregular time next uh, Tuesday, I believe that's May 12th, uh, Toyin Agbetu. Uh, he is in London, England. Uh, he should be with us uh, next, I guess it's afternoon. So it'll be 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, next Tuesday, the 12th, uh, talking about how they have responded to the coronavirus situation in the UK, how it's impacting black people there, what his observations, suggestions are. Be looking forward to checking in with him next week. As I said, I think it is important uh, being able to study what's happening globally uh, since folks are responding around the world, that that might put us in a better position to make intelligent choices uh, about what's happening and what we can do. Try to keep ourselves safe. Folks that we care about, maybe even are responsible for keep them safe as well. Uh, but that's next week. Loving talking to folks. Uh, racism, white supremacy is global. Always good uh, to keep that in mind. Expand the dialogue. Uh, any other folks, comments, observations they wanted to make sure they get in before we wrap things up? Call it a broadcast. Gus, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Caller in California. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to inform the listeners if they are not aware that um, if you have a Cash App app, that you are able to also buy stock. Um, and considering the situation, a lot of uh, stocks are down. So if you want to purchase something in an uh, airline or a theme park, um, it might be a good time. But that's about it. Thank you. Great suggestion. I know some other listeners <clears throat> had similar thoughts uh, that a lot of stocks are down. So if you are able, if you're in position, might be a great time where you can rack up, make some investments improve your situation financially uh, folks were talking about that back in March so absolutely take advantage be really great if we had known about all of this in advance uh, been like you know Senator Burr and uh, the white woman down in Georgia I forgot her name which is bad because she does not get mentioned uh, but she's accused of doing the same thing like moving and making all these stock op uh, stock deals uh, like in the weeks and months before all of this got really bad <clears throat> in the US uh, where she profited substantially uh, it looks like from having some sort of insider not insider trading I think they call that uh, supposed to be criminal activity they didn't treat her like the fellow treated me at the mailbox going and running up on what are you doing where'd you get that information you know full interrogation but yeah 
Excellent suggestion, sir. Invest if you can. Cash App makes it easy. Do some research, I reckon. Uh, if you have any free time, I know we have a lot of essential workers, but if you got some free time, you can make that a part of your research while you are at home. Uh, other, anything else folks need to make sure they share? We'll assume folks are satisfied. Uh, much obliged for the participation uh, folks who came in with their uh, suggestions, recommendations, uh, appreciated. Uh, take it seriously. Uh, the virus and white people, take them seriously. Uh, they can do a lot of damage. Uh, again, <clears throat> if you are out, if you get confronted, <clears throat> Just do as best that you can. You're not even, in my view, I wouldn't even really be too focused on saying a whole lot. It would really be more about getting myself out of here, out of this situation as quickly as possible so that I can get someplace safe. Uh, as I think retired firefighter said, if it's you're trying to get to like your vehicle or your residence and it's blocked like the the hooligans, race soldiers, whatever it is, they've uh, kind of blocked the path or it looks like it's going to be difficult. If it's daytime, if you can get to another safe location, uh, if you can get other folks uh, involved to witness or call enforcement officials or what have you so that you have some uh, help in dealing with the matter, that is great. Uh, but take it seriously and keep in mind, even if you only get confronted by one white person, uh, they easily could have enforcements. Uh, just keep that in mind. You have no idea if this is some sort of trap. Uh, that has been launched for you or what you're dealing with uh, if this is just being randomly sprung on you so the main objective safely escape this situation as quickly as possible that should be the thinking and not responding with emotion I don't need to show these folks up I don't need to call them any names or respond any of that no responding with emotion I'm just trying to get out of here I'm just trying to get out of here as safely as I can, as quickly as I can. Hope these folks aren't armed, but they might be. That's it. Uh, thanks again for the folks uh, tuning in live or archived. Hope it was worthy of your uh, Tuesday evening or excuse me, Wednesday evening under quarantine uh, disrupted. You could have been watching Netflix or, you know, whatever else it is. Uh, I will say it again, uh, sobriety would be best under conditions of white supremacy. Uh, we want to preserve our brain computer. Uh, man, <laughs> you never know when you are going to be sprung into some sort of situation where your brain has got to get working, might have to save your life in processing what's happening and threat level and all the rest of it. You never know. So since that is the case, man preserve that brain computer take care of your health sobriety is best in addition to being sober let's be buckled say it again really shouldn't be doing a whole lot of going out we're still you know under restrictions here in Washington State I think that's the case for a lot of folks in many other areas uh, man it should be very strategic about where you're going this is not the time for joyriding uh, planning thinking in advance where am I going? Do I really need to go right now? Is it something that I can wait until it's daylight to get this done? I just don't think it's safe uh, to be going out willy nilly. You have a lot of armed, angry, anxious race soldiers uh, who are excited about the prospect of using their new firearm. That right there is a deadly combination. Uh, I would just be very strategic. Uh, I'm not looking to be hanging out late at night or anything like that. If I'm going out, I'm going bang, going to work. I'm going out, bang, going to the store. I'm, you know, very direct, very precise about what it is I'm going to do. This is not just aimlessly chilling outside. It is just not that time uh, right now under these conditions. Uh, I'm not trying to be in contact unnecessarily with race soldiers badge or no uh, if you are going to go out you are sober you are buckled and if you're driving 
You are not on the cell phone. Same premise, really. Minimize contact with race soldiers. Badge or no, under these conditions, we do not want any lame excuse. I uh, saw you on the phone there. Where that now? I got to be pulled over. And where's your essential worker paperwork? Where's your mask? And, you know, all the rest of it. Not on the cell phone. Uh, we should have a lot of time where we can casually put our feet up from our residence and, you know, text away or whatever, whatever else we got to do. Uh, that said, creator, we ask that you help us remain patient with other black people, victims of white supremacy. We ask that you help us remain patient with ourselves. Remind us to demonstrate the highest levels of black self-respect at all times, in all places, each and every time we are in contact with another black person. It has been time. Replace white supremacy with justice immediately. Cal signing out. Thanks all for tuning in. Nigga, you so brainwashed. I'm a victim, brother.